All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, just, just again, I've had several opening remarks, so uh, I keep, keep this brief, but I uh, just want to thank everybody at the Tournament of Roses, uh, Mr. Chin and his staff, and, and uh, our hospitality has been off the charts. Our guys are having a great time and uh, very excited for the challenge ahead. Uh, we'll close up things this afternoon kind of in our normal fashion as far as our, our closing 48 hours before game time and, uh, uh, you know, playing in the, in the best venue in, in college football in the Rose Bowl. And, and we'll be, again, very excited for that challenge. Great. Please raise your hand with questions. We'll start with the gentleman back there. Oh, just, we have a mic. One second. Craig Burnback, KETU. Uh, Coach, I asked a lot of your players if they noticed the difference between you and your first year and your second year. Most of them said that you were pretty much the same. Can you point uh, to one thing that you changed this year that might have helped your success? <laughs> well, that, that's it now, right? We've had this quote unquote dramatic success, which it's not that, you know, maybe not that different. And it's always this one reason. It's because we wore this helmet or that, you know, there's, there's, you can point to a thousand different things, but our, our whole deal is we, we want to be better. We want to be better in every single thing we do, and that, that certainly starts with me. Uh, but that's nutrition. That's, at, you know, that's medicine. It's how we practice. It's at everything that we try to, to uh, evaluate uh, on a daily basis and then on a year-to-year -year basis. Some of that is schematic changes. Some of those are personnel changes. Uh, but um, hopefully, hopefully we're all better uh, the second go-around. We have a question on the left. Stephen Alexander, Portland Tribune. Mark, what what did you learn in the previous BCS games where, while you were the offensive coordinator that you can take into this game and, and bring into it? A lot, uh, and, and we've, we've talked about that and addressed that, particularly with our, our younger guys who haven't been in these games. Uh, it's it's different, you know. That the the game is different. The uh, as I said yesterday, the crowd will be jacked for the coin toss. You know, the the, the coin toss will decide the game in a, lot, in a lot of people's minds. The first first down, the first just ebb and flow of the game, and it's and it's really just being able to sustain your focus on yourselves and not the guys that are going to look really good in the in the garnet and gold. They're going to you know that's going to be a great looking team, and I think a lot of teams. Uh, are mesmerized by that and fall back into that uh, in, in some of their comebacks after giving them a, a, a great test early and not being able to, to sustain sustain that. But you know the TV timeouts are different. The you know the atmosphere again will be outstanding, but we can't get caught up in that. We'll try to do try to try to kind of take care of that today when we visit the, the stadium, take some pictures, be you know ooh and ah a little bit, and then just just dial it in. We have a question on the back right. <laughs> Coach, uh, Sandy Hooper, USA Today Sports, right here. Hey. Um, so we had a little bit of fun with your players this week. Asked them uh, what they thought your New Year's resolution should be in terms of coaching. They said that you should hit the gym and work on your biceps. Just wonder Fact. if you had any thoughts about that and what you think your New Year's resolution should be in terms of coaching. I've thought of a lot of things this fall, and that's not one of them. So I need to, I need to go back to work. Maybe I just need, what were theirs? The, I need to gain some weight. Well, I definitely need to work on the biceps, so that, that's true. Uh, and I, I'm sure my wife will have a couple, couple others that I need to work on. Take out the garbage on time, that kind of stuff. We have another question on the right. Hey, Coach. Asher Wildman, WCTV. I was just wondering, you're facing a quarterback that's never lost a game, and, and obviously Florida State's on this amazing run. Just what are some of the intangibles you've seen that, yes, they've got some lucky bounces, but you're still facing a quarterback who's never lost in college football? Yeah, I mean, and that lucky bounce thing only goes so far, right? I mean, you don't win 29 games in a row with luck, ever. Uh, and uh, they're just unflappable in a, in a lot of ways. They, they, again, they get everybody's best shot. The team that's playing them that week has had their best week of focus, their best week of preparation, trying to, to dethrone the, the champs. And uh, to, to, to be resilient enough to come back and win all those games is, again, very, very impressive. Um, they, make a ton, they just make a ton of plays when it matters the most. And, and you know, there's times you look at a, a game like the Virginia game where Virginia's in really good shape and they have two really bad possessions back to back and, it, and it's over. You know, it, it's over. And so, uh, again, focus on the next play. It's all those, all those you know, cliche type deals that, that, that go into to, to a successful football game are even and more important just because of, of how good they are. They can score on any, you know, any play in any phase. They can, it's a pick six, it's a scoop and score, uh, a flip of the field on a, on a punt return, a punt return for a touch. All those things are, are huge and it's, you know, again, just focusing on, on us. We have a question from the front row. 
AJ Jacobson, Rivals.com. Coach, you know, obviously you got so much more time to prepare for a, a Rose Bowl game. How do you change the pace of preparation so that you're peaking your team at the right time? That's the, the, the multi-million dollar question for sure is just how to, how to, how to be physical enough to, to still hit and tackle and be able to do those things, to be conditioned, to be great on special teams, which you look at every bowl game and there's, a, you know, there's something significant in special teams that, that affects the, the outcome. Uh, and then a, another thing I think our staff has done a great job of is not being, not being too cute. You, know, you can't reinvent the wheel and, and do something that, that isn't, isn't us. You know, and I'm sure that they're, they're doing the same thing. You fight that urge about this time of year of, okay, what if they put 14 guys in the week A gap and they put 12, you know, they, they can't do that. It's illegal. Uh, you know, and just in trying to, trying to just focus on, you know, start from the game time, move it back, and make it, make it as user-friendly for our guys to play fast and free and confident. Another question up front here. Uh, good morning, Coach. Good morning. I'm uh, Bill Roden with the New York Times. Uh, what you do uh, is very uh, intense as, as, a, as a coach. How will this tournament that all of us have, have, have called for intensify what you do in terms of recruiting, in terms of just everything? How will mm -hmm. it just make it? More. Yeah, the 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 intensity and the build up and all that thing, I, I don't think has really changed that much um, since the, the BCS era for, for us in our conference. We can't lose a game, you know, in terms of, of the BCS and how, the, how that all, all, all led to the culmination of, of choosing those two teams. And so it's been, you know, very similar that way. I think it's been great for the media. You just name your four teams and turn on the microphone and argue, you know, and, and that's, that's been great for college football. It's been an unbelievable infomercial for, for college football all, all year long, just that, that build up. Um, it's been great for our university. You know, we think those things are, are, are tied together absolutely at the hip. We're the, the most diverse highest achieving biggest class in the history of the University of Oregon and we'd like to think that that we're a part of that um, from an intensity day-to-day -day, you know type of thing it really really doesn't change that much and and we are believe me 100% focused on Florida State and and haven't you know looked beyond them one second which I think is comical that that's been brought up we have a question on the left Mark Austin Meek with the Registry Guard Six years ago, you were the offensive coordinator on a Colorado team that was five and seven. Tomorrow, you're going to coach head coach in the Rose Bowl. Can you just sort of put in perspective how that how that happened? Um, I don't know if I can put anything in perspective of, of exactly how you know what you're working toward, but I've been on both sides of it. You know, we've been not very good, and we've been we've been fortunate to be to be really good uh, some places that that we've been, uh, and just part of a, a great program. Uh, our staff, our culture, everything at the university is 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 moving the right direction, and and very happy to be on that side of it for sure, uh, and uh, being around a great group of guys and, and men and women on our program and certainly on, on our team. We have a question in the front right. Uh, Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Coach, when some of these quarterbacks who come out of systems similar to yours make jump to the NFL, some of them struggle with it. Any chance that the system sort of that they've gotten used to in college works against them as they make the transition to the pro game? Well, there's so many factors that go into that, you know, of whether it's uh, you look at a, a quote unquote, every, every quarterback's a system quarterback, right? I mean, whatever they run, they run, that's their deal. And I think it, it really depends on that individual way more so than the system and then you have to look at where they go you know generally uh top flight quarterbacks don't end up at the you know in the perfect just plug and play type of uh everybody you know they've got 21 other great players and they just need the quarterback that's that's rare for guys that that are that are whatever highly touted uh coming out of coming out of uh college I know you know with with both the quarterbacks in this game they can they can play at any level uh you know both those guys they're completely different you know totally different guys from, from a style standpoint, um, but both will have, have tremendous NFL careers if they end up in the right spot. You know, if they don't, things can, things can go different ways. We have a question on the back riser. Mark Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. You've always seemed so calm and, and collected, and that's what you preach to the players in, in, on the big stage like this, but what about yourself? Have you felt the nerves as, as during the lead up to this game? And, Maybe what will you be feeling maybe tomorrow when you take the field? <laughs> game day. You know, it's game day. I think our, our, our most important time, in, in my opinion, is earlier this week 
two weeks ago, three weeks ago, fall camp, you know, all the things. I, I lose sleep over Mondays and Tuesdays practice way more so than, than, than game day, you know, uh, of, of making sure we're in the right frame of mind to go out and prepare great. And our guys have, have bought into that, you know, wholeheartedly. Uh, obviously, we've had, you know, had one, one big hiccup this year, uh, have bounced back from that really well. And, and we've had, you know, we've had a great, great couple weeks of preparation. Now we just got just to gotta go play. A question right up here. Mark Dennis Dodd, CBSSports.com. Since you've been to a few of these, can you explain why the Rose Bowl is so special to people that maybe haven't been here before, and then how a playoff might affect it? Do you think in the future? Um, well, the playoff, you know, the playoff aspect of it to go in reverse order would, would certainly affect just the purest of, of, of you know, growing up on the West Coast, the the, the Pac, eight, ten, twelve, uh, versus the Big Ten element. Probably, you know, it's it's difficult to maintain. Um, and, and, you know, for, for one of those teams or two of those teams, that's a good thing, depending on the odd year. Um, but, uh, the, the, I mean, it's the granddaddy of them all. The, the waking up on, on New Year's Day and you had the Rose Parade and in the early mid-afternoon hours you had the Rose Bowl. And, you know, Dick Enberg, Keith, Jack, you know, Keith Jackson, the field, the, the, you know, usually a sun-filled stadium. Those visions and those sounds are something that, that are incredibly special and, and unique to this game. We have a question from Ivan. Yeah, Ivan Mazel, ESPN.com. Mark, uh, I, I feel like the last, not every bowl game since you've been here, and you've been including with Chip, but the majority of them, the offense has begun slowly. Is it have to do with the layoff at all? And if that is so, the fact that there's only been three weeks of a layoff this year instead of five in a BCS system, has that helped? Well, I think the first and most important factor in that is you're playing against somebody really good, <laughs> you know? And they are, they are they're very talented as, as a coaching staff, you know, very deep and talented as a coaching staff, very deep and talented on the field. And they don't just, you know, get out of the way and let you score. Uh, and so that, that I think is the, the biggest, the biggest problem. Uh, it's natural to have a little anxiety up, you know, up front. Uh, and it's, it's, I would say it's not, you know, there are less moving parts to a successful defensive play than a successful offensive play. And that go, you know, that partially goes into it. Uh, but then that's where, again, you just have to have to work that into your preparation, try to create that, but you cannot, you know, you can't simulate the aura and the, you know, the, the, the presence that the, the, the Rose Bowl whole, whole scenario situation atmosphere is, uh, you know, in your indoor facility. And so we'll go out and, and we'll attack. Um, maybe, you know, maybe, and we had an odd three weeks. Our coaches and our, and our, and our in-house staff did a great job from a recruiting standpoint, obviously had some great distractions along the way in those, those three weeks that, 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 uh, took us off the field, but it wouldn't have changed and didn't change any of our, uh, peer preparation for the game. We have another question on the right. Coach Bill Bender, Sporting News. The word unique gets tossed around with your program a lot. So my question would be, what's unique about Oregon to you? <laughs> How long do we have? You know, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things that, that that we think make it make it special. I think the the people first and foremost. Um, everybody talks about you know Mr. and Mrs. Knight and and their their financial contribution, but their their personal just blood, sweat, and tears, guts uh, contributions to the entire university. Uh, they're literally immeasurable, uh, and then you, you you go beyond that to to you know the simplest thing in terms of of, of we're different is is Speaking as a native Oregonian, there's not a ton of talent in the state of Oregon, so we kind of have to go everywhere. And you know that that the the ascension probably started a little bit with the helmets and the uniforms and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully we've we've moved beyond that. You know, we talk constantly about the guys in the uniforms, not the uniform. Uniforms don't you know don't give you points. If they do, we'd we'd love that if we could look into that. Um, but being around there on a daily basis, it's all about the people. And you know we can't you know. Coach Fisher, he could probably drive two or three hours in a in a radius around his his school, and they put together a pretty good ball club. We have to go a little bit further, and that's a tremendous strength in our in our program. Please raise your hand if you have any additional questions. Go up front here. Uh, Bill Roden again with the New York Times. I, I, what I meant with my original question is: Will this tournament? 
the entire tournament uh, as a coach uh, uh, intensify recruiting, the, the importance of talent, which has always been important, mm -hmm. but now I'm wondering if because of sure. this new setup, it will even intensify. Yeah, well, I apologize for not, not answering your question correctly earlier. Yeah, uh, you know, three things when you, when you look at why young, you know, prospective student athletes choose a place are distance from home, which is a challenge for us, uh, winning and then having a plan for them, you know, having, having a plan for them. We think we have a pretty good hold on two of those three. Um, the third one you can't, you can't affect, you know, we're not going to move the campus. Um, and so uh, being successful, being out there, publici you know, publicizing the great things about the University of Oregon uh, certainly can do nothing but, but help those efforts of at least getting in those doors. And now we just need to make sure it's the right guy coming into our program and he's not just excited about you know, the Hatfield Dallin complex. He's not just excited about the, you know, Nike relationship. He wants to come here and, and, and truly maximize his, his existence. I think pressure is relative. I think we, you know, I think you have pressure to, to have a, you know, tremendous practice today you know there's a ton of pressure on that and I think all, all that other stuff the external stuff the, the the lights camera action you know elements of it that's great you know you, you want to be a part of those kind of games okay, we have another question from the back Mark Warren Williamson again Oregon Duck Football News didn't really get a chance to talk to you this week about this but Southern Oregon won the NAIA congratulations Absolutely. on that yeah so uh, maybe talk about that and what that means to you as a former player and maybe it might be a good omen <laughs> we'll take it. If it, any, yeah, any sort of mojo, we'll take. Uh, no, Southern Oregon had an unbelievable year, a tremendous season for those guys, and, and to to finish in the in the style that they did, basically dominating the the semifinal and the and the championship game was was awesome to watch. And and got a you know ton of friends down there that, that are still on that staff, and and uh, have have talked with Coach Howard and his staff, you know, somewhat extensively about. Uh, ball and they do a great job. They do a great job. We can learn a lot of you know from a lot of things from those guys. We have a question right up front from Exito Magazine from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, the Spanish magazine is pro about you and the dogs. I know you are focused in the Ross Bowl, but my question is, do you think you are ready for NFL? Maybe 49ers? <laughs> First of all, is that your Eugene accent right there? Uh, <laughs> I am, I am not ready to play in the NFL. I'm not. I'm going to forego my senior season and stay in college. But, no, I have no idea. You know, those kind of things. It, you know, a couple weeks ago, I'm the biggest idiot in the history of the world. And, and now there's some other adjectives out there. And so we are, believe me, focused on, on a lot of other things and not the 49ers. We have another question. Ryan Rillard, KWVA. Coach, when you look at the film, how do you feel like your conditioning stacks up with FSU? Um, you know, we, we consider that, you know, a big strength of ours, just our conditioning and, and, and how, we, how we work, how we practice, how we train in, in, from the beginning of, of fall camp onward. And, and we consider that a, a, a tremendous uh, point of pride and source of confidence. Uh, relative to, to Florida State, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Um, they are a tremendously fast, physical, uh, talented football team. And, you know, at this point, you're, you're playing against great, great people in, in every phase. Um, and, you know, we certainly, again, we, we, we've always used that as a, as a source of pride, a source of confidence. And, and I know our guys uh, believe 100% in, in, in that part of our process. We'll take two more questions, one back there on the left. Mark, Dan Uthman from USA Today Sports. Coach Frost yesterday said that Oregon is a program there where there's not a lot of yelling at players. Just wanted to ask you the philosophy behind that and what it might take for there to really be some yelling. <laughs> well, there, there's hopefully a way more teaching than, than yelling. You know, when we, we, we hammer home just as, as coaches when, we, when we're talking about ourselves is, is you know, we, we need to teach the guys what to do. And, you know, the old coaching, you know, do it right. What does, that, what does that mean? You know, anybody in this room could tell somebody to do it right. We have, you know, excellent specialists in their field, great leaders of, of, of young men that need to teach guys what to do and show them and tell them and you know find the way to 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 hit the, to bring that home and you know the music's too loud to yell at them anyway so they wouldn't be able to hear us but uh you know especially in the in the in the meeting rooms and all that stuff is it's 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 teaching you know it's not it's not who can scream the loudest that's you know for the for the movies 
One more question on the left. Uh, Mark, Bruce Feldman from uh, Fox Sports. You've been a guy. Bruce, he's quick. There he is. Uh, you've been a guy who obviously grew up in the state, and there's a lot of guys on your staff who seem like they have been at Oregon forever. You see yourself there. I know you're focused on the game, but do you see yourself at Oregon for 20 years like some of these other guys down the road? I have no idea. You know, again, it's, it's a, this is a weird business, and, and uh, they might keep me for 20 more days. Who knows? Um, but uh, that, that, you know, going back to the question about unique, it's, it, it is truly unique uh, at, at Oregon. Our staff is it's the longest tenured staff in, in, in college football, and, and there's guys that have been there for 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, we have a ton of people in our, in our support, you know, quote unquote support staff type of elements, whether it's academics, uh, sports information, all, you know, athletic medicine, all the people that, that maybe. Uh, a lot of other places, that's a springboard to somewhere else or a stepping stone to somewhere else, and and they love to be a part of Oregon football and being part of that is is very special. Uh, you know, in our in our in our city, there's we don't have you know we don't have the Lakers and the Clippers and all that other stuff going on, and we're we're kind of that, and and that's a uh, it's a it's a great thing to be a part of. We do have time for one more question up front. David Fox with with Athlon Sports. So many firsts for Oregon over the last ten to twenty years. What might change for your program if you're able to win these next two games? I'm sure, I'm sure a lot, and I'm sure not much. You know, I think uh, nationally, hopefully, the the you know the perspective of of not only our team but our conference um, uh, would elevate. Um, you know, and the SEC has, has had that that uh, right to to puff out their chest, and with very good reason over the past several years. Um, but we think, you know, we think we're doing a lot of the right things on, on this side of the country, and, and you know, it, it would validate it would validate things externally a lot more than I think I internally.